Hey there, this is Debbie Hodge from Stitch Stories, and I want to show you a close-up look at our Mountain Time Embroidery Kit, one that's packed with stitches. It's a lot of fun to create. Let's take a closer look at what you get in the kit and stitching it. So, Mountain Time comes, as with all of our kits, with a detailed uh, instruction guide and all of your supplies in a tin and a bamboo hoop. So you've got the bamboo hoop, you've got your supplies in this tin which is really handy for storage and the pattern is printed to a ten and a half inch square piece of cotton fabric. It'll fit right in your hoop. So you can stitch it up in that, you can display it afterwards as you want, or some people buy a, a, a nicer hoop. I, I usually buy beechwood hoops for displaying and I use the bamboo hoop for stitching. All the supplies come in this really handy tin. And <clears throat> let's take a look at the flosses that we get with this kit. There are so like a garnet, a rust, a coral, and a bright orange, and then um, moss green, uh, sort of a light green, and a light blue. So. There's enough floss here to stitch this design at least twice. I do also sell just the fabric pattern. You're going to get two needles and a needle minder. If you're not familiar with a needle minder, once you've put your design into the hoop for stitching, the needle minder is magnetic. So you, this little enamel teacup, put, on, put that on the top of your fabric, then put the um, magnet on the bottom and it will hold it in place and then when you grab a needle, your needle is in place while you stitch. No need to worry. So that's what you get in this kit. Um, let's take a look at the stitching guide. So every stitching guide is made of this heavy cardstock, and on the cover there's a picture that shows you all the details of the stitches. So if you're like, oh, how exactly, you know, did Debbie do that when she did this layered grid here? Then you can take a look at the photo here to get a nice look at it. And then inside, you've got, um, if you've never embroidered, there's instructions for getting started, like how to separate the floss, how to um, put your uh, project in a hoop, how to knot it on the background or not knot it behind the hoop. There's the color key with all the colors, and then um, a diagram that tells you which color and which stitch I use for the clouds, split stitch in light blue. Uh, for this mountain, it's um, straight stitch with apricot and weave under the short lines with coral. And I give you more details over here about how that works. If you're a brand new stitcher, then you'll start with the new stitcher start here, which usually has you starting with things like straight stitch. I'll even get you started and show. Like in this design, these green hills are filled with a shishiko-like design uh, pattern of straight stitches. So that's a great place to start. And then the tent has also got straight stitches. But this is in two colors and they're smaller so i would do that second so i walk you through the stitches to do in order so that you can get familiar with things and um when i say to you hey use a straight stitch if you don't know what a straight stitch is then you'll just flip to the back and you'll look up straight stitch and there's a diagram and the instructions with all of our kits, there are a variety of stitches, and these mountains really give you so many fun stitches to work with. I like you to, um, our designs are not lots of satin stitching, they aren't lots of thread painting, so they aren't really, <clears throat> excuse me, intricate projects. They're more fun projects that get you mastering a variety of stitches. So just take a look at these mountains. This mountain is filled with a layered grid, and that is back stitching, first in the dark color, then in the light color. This is satin stitch, this is chain stitch, fly stitch, a fun zigzag stitch. Let me show you how to stitch this zigzag stitch. It's a lot of fun. So <clears throat> take a look. I've done part of it. So see that there's little vertical lines and those are all done in that bright orange so I've got those vertical lines all done so now let's get some coral floss and let me show you how I stitch that so this is what my tin looks like once I've been working on something it gets a little messy and um, I just like to be a little messy you might like to be a little tidier this just suits me but I love how I have the tin and it's easy to just take it out work on it a little bit put it away if something happens so all of our most of the stitching is worked in two strands of floss. See how the floss comes in six strands? So usually you're pulling apart two strands. Sometimes I'll tell you maybe you want to use three for satin stitch. So I pull it apart. I usually use the technique where I put one part of it in my mouth to pull out those two strands. And then what I like to do is use a floss conditioner. It's just wax. And I like to run my floss across that wax and it minimizes knots. It makes it easier to thread. We have this 
in the stitchstories.com shop. And then we're going to thread the needle. So let me find a needle here. And you saw I licked the end of it. If it didn't have a nice sharp blunt cut to it, I would cut it again. Then I'm going to thread it. And now let me anchor it. So I don't tie a knot at the end of every single thread. Once I've got some stitch, I have to do it for the first one. But once I've got some stitching in place, I like to just anchor on stitches that are already there. So I want to come up around over here. Let's see. Or I could come up over here. So there's some stitching I could, there's some stitching already that I could anchor it under. So I'm just anchor it under there. Just sort of loop it around. <clears throat> and now let me show you how I do this stitch. So I'm going to come up right here at the end and there's this line I want to cover but I'm not just going to put my needle back through the fabric. Instead I'm going to put my needle right underneath that piece of thread that's already there. Then I'll go up to this one and the one below and I'll work my way across the design just tucking under those straight stitches that were already put in place. Alright, so now I'm just going to, um, I, I would usually finish it, but right now I'm just going to, again, instead of tying a knot, I'm just going to anchor it on the stitches behind there and trim it. So one other bit of stitching I want to show you is working on this straight stitch. So I'll need the light green for that. And cut off a piece. I'm going to separate two strands. Run my thread across the uh, the wax. Licked my thread. That's how I always thread my needle. It always helps me. And once I've got it threaded, I want to work on these straight stitches. So I'm just going to anchor under the tent here. Which is right near where I want to start stitching. And these are straight stitches. So one way to do them is to go up through the fabric and then down through it. Up and down. But I kind of like doing it a little bit faster way. I know there's people who, there, there are some stitchers who have very strong opinions about this and really don't like to do it this way, but my preference is to go down at the end of one line and come back up at the end of another one. It does get your finger pricked up a little, so I finished that line. Let me do, um, let's do this horizontal line running across the, the design here. So again, just going down at the end of one, up at the beginning of another. I've even seen, so this pattern, this fill pattern here is much um, taken from a shishiko kind of design. That's a, a fill. You can look up sashiko and see what sashiko embroidery looks like. And they have a, a thimble that actually fits right in your palm so that you could even do, you could do multiples of these running right across. And then you use that thimble that fits in your palm to push the thread through lots and lots of spots. Got a little knot there. Always just be careful. Don't panic. See what you can do to tease it out. There we go. Just things got bound up a little. Now I'm done. Alright, so when I finish that line, of course, then I'll go to the back of my fabric and I'll leave it back in. So, other things that are going on here. We've got Lazy Daisies going on in this tree. Satin stitch for this one. The tent is really fun. In the instructions, I talk about the order of things. So, for example, this tent is outlined. You'll want to do all the satin stitch first and then outline it. I feel like it gives you, I like the results better that way. I feel like it lets me be a little less perfect about the edges of my satin stitching, a little more forgiving if I'm covering it up afterwards, as opposed to outlining it and then having to fill without touching any of the outlines. 
this is kind of fun. These um, golden arcs are um, the bottom part of each arc is backstitched and the top part is outlined stitch. Oh no, split stitched. So you just get differences in texture. More straight stitches over here in the grass. More straight stitches for these little motifs inside of the tree. The fox has some satin stitching going on with him. So this is just a, a fun design if you really want to work a lot of stitches. It's also great to display or gift to anybody who loves the mountains, who loves camping, who loves hiking. And remember, um, you get enough floss, you could stitch it twice if you wanted to with the kit. So this is Mountain Time from stitchstories.com. You can find it at stitchstories.com slash mountain.